Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture of the course Digital Signal Processing. In the previous lectures, we have seen what is Z-transform and we have also analyzed its properties. Now from this lecture, we will see what is the Z-transform of an LTI system and what exactly it tells us about the LTI system. So to begin with, an LTI system or a linear and time invariant system is characterized by its impulse response which can be given as h of n. Now suppose x of n is the input to the system and y of n is output to the system then its output can be calculated or determined using convolution sum and this convolution is given as summation k running from minus infinity to infinity x of k into h of n minus k and can be denoted as x of n convolved with h of n and this star is nothing but the convolution operator. Now we have seen that in the properties of z transform if we have convolution in time domain then we have multiplication in z domain. So using that concept the z transform of the output y of z can be calculated as x of z into h of z where x of z and h of z are the z transform of the input and the impulse response respectively. And therefore by making some mathematical adjustments the z transform of the impulse response can be determined if we know the z transform or if we know the output and input of the system that is the z transform of the output upon z transform of the input and this is very important as many times we don't know exactly how the system impulse response is given mathematically and many times we just have output corresponding to a particular input so using the output and input only we can know what is the impulse response by just taking the inverse of this term. We have also seen in the previous lectures the rational form for Z transform and in as a standard format it can be represented as H of Z is equal to B0 plus B1 Z inverse plus and so on up to Bm into Z to the power of minus M whole divided by a0 plus a1z inverse and so on up to an into z to the power of minus n. Now making some mathematical adjustments this same thing can be represented as g0 into z to the power of minus of m minus n into z minus z1 into z minus z2 and so on till z minus zm whole divided by z minus p1 upon into z minus p2 and so on up to z minus pn where this z1, z2 and so on up to zm are nothing but zeros and this p1, p2 and so on up to pn are nothing but poles and he, here we are talking about the finite poles and zeros and this g0 is nothing but gain and is given as b0 upon a0. Now keeping all these things in mind let us make a very interesting claim which is given as for a physically realizable system the number of poles are greater than or equal to number of zeros and while making this claim we are excluding the poles and zeros that are at z equal to infinity and when I say up that physically realizable systems I talk specifically about causal systems. So let us try to prove this claim using some examples. So consider the case 1 where my number of poles are greater than number of zeros. For that consider this example h of z is equal to z plus 1 whole divided by z square plus 2z plus 2. Now let us represent this z transform in a standard format 
like this where this a0 is equal to 1. For that we will make some mathematical adjustments by taking z to the power 2 common from numerator and denominator. So we have z inverse plus z to the power minus 2 whole divided by z square into 1 plus 2z inverse plus 2z to the power minus 2. Simplifying we get z inverse plus z to the power minus 2 whole divided by 1 plus 2z inverse plus 2z to the power minus 2. Now we also know that this h of z is nothing but this h of z is nothing but y of z divided by x of z which is equal to z inverse plus z to the power minus 2 upon 1 plus 2z inverse plus 2z to the power minus 2. Now if we cross multiply we get y of z into 1 plus 2z inverse plus 2z to the power minus 2 which is equal to x of z into z inverse plus z to the power minus 2. Now if we simplify this equation we get y of z plus 2z inverse into y of z plus 2z to the power minus 2 into y of z which is equal to z inverse into x of z plus z to the power minus 2 into x of z. Now let us take inverse of this equation. So taking inverse z transform So the inverse z transform of this y of z is nothing but our output y of n plus 2. Now look at this term z inverse into y of z it is nothing but z transform of y of n minus 1 because using the time shift property of the z transform we have y of n minus n naught will have a z transform of y of z which is scaled by z to the power minus n naught. So here our n naught is nothing but 1 so we have 2 into y of n minus 1 plus 2 into y of n minus 2 and similarly this is nothing but the z transform of x of n minus 1 plus x of n minus 2. We will keep this y of n term on the left hand side and shift rest of the terms on the RHS. So we have y of n is equal to x of n minus 1 plus x of n minus 2 minus 2 into y of n minus 1 minus 2 into y of n minus 2. Now if we see this n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 1 and n minus 2 are actually the delayed versions. Means this depends, the current value of n depends on the past values of the input. Means suppose I consider my n is equal to 0. So I have y of 0 is equal to x of minus 1 plus x of minus 2 minus 2 into y of minus 1 minus 2 into y of minus 2. Now this minus 1 minus 2 are nothing but the past values. These are all the past values. Means the current value of output is dependent only on the past values. And for a causal system, the current value of output should depend only on the present or past values. So this satisfies the condition for causality and hence the system is causal. And this, for this case, we had the number of poles greater than number of zeros. So let us consider the other way around. 
where my number of poles the case 2 where my number of poles are less than number of zeros for this we'll consider the same example with inverted case that is h of z is equal to z square plus 2z plus 2 divided by z plus 1 and we'll do the same exercise but now we'll take z common from numerator and denominator so we have z plus 2 plus 2z inverse divided by 1 plus z inverse multiplied by z so we have z plus 2 plus 2z inverse upon 1 minus z inverse therefore if we have this as y of z upon x of z and cross multiplying we get y of z this should be plus plus z inverse into y of z which is equal to z into x of z plus 2 into x of z plus 2z inverse into x of z again taking the inverse of this we have y of n plus y of n minus 1 using the time shift property which is equal to y of n plus 1 plus 2 this should be x x of n plus 1 plus 2 into x of n plus 2 into x of n minus 1 therefore my y of n that is the output is equal to x of n plus 1 plus 2 into x of n plus 2 into x of n minus 1 minus y of n minus 1 now if we concentrate on this term it is n plus 1 that is the advanced time means this actually is the future value for example if we consider n equal to 0 we have y of 0 is equal to x of 1 plus 2 into x of 0 plus 2 into x of minus 1 minus y of minus 1 now all these terms are present and past values of input but this term x of 1 actually indicates the future dependency and since the current value of output depends on the future value of input hence this system is not causal so this system is not causal so we have if number of poles are less than number of zeros then the system is not causal so after this complete discussion we can conclude that for physically realizable systems that is for causal systems for causal systems the number of poles are always greater than or equal to number of zeros let's stop here thank you